I'm a proud conservative. I always have been. As a proud conservative, I've always put democracy and our Constitution above all else. And it's because of my unwavering support for democracy that today, as a proud conservative, I'm endorsing Joe Biden for re-election. Hi again, everyone. It's now 5 o'clock in the East. Words that would have been unimaginable just a few years ago. A stalwart, self-described conservative, a one-time Tea Party darling, crossing the political aisle to protect our democracy, as he puts it. President Joe Biden heading into an historic debate tomorrow night against the man who sought to end democracy with wins in his sails, thanks to an endorsement from a member of the other political party. Former Congressman Adam Kinzinger telling voters that Donald Trump is just too dangerous to be sent back to the White House. Donald Trump poses a direct threat to every fundamental American value. He doesn't care about our country. He doesn't care about you. He only cares about himself, and he'll hurt anyone or anything in pursuit of power. He attacked the foundation of this nation, encouraging a violent mob of his supporters to march on the Capitol to prevent the peaceful transition of power. Now he's become even more dangerous. He's called for termination of the Constitution. He wants to be a dictator on day one. He actually said that and he's continuing to stoke the flames of political violence. Now's the time to unite behind Joe Biden and show Donald Trump off the stage once and for all. President Joe Biden retweeting Adam Kinzinger's endorsement and saying this, quote, this is what putting your country before your party looks like. I'm grateful for your endorsement, Adam. This full-throated repudiation of Donald Trump an enthusiastic endorsement of President Joe Biden comes from one of the 10 members of Congress who did more than nearly anyone else in revealing the inner workings of the Trump coup plot of 2020, showing the entire nation and the world that what happened on January 6th wasn't some tragic accident. It wasn't something that just went too far. It was the result of months of deliberate plotting on the part of Donald Trump and seeding a lie on the part of Donald Trump that the election he lost was stolen from him, putting that lie in the minds of millions of Trump supporters, and that as the mob stormed the Capitol, Trump sat back and watched his work. At the same time that President Trump was acknowledging privately that he had lost the election, he was hearing that there was no evidence of fraud or irregularities sufficient to change the outcome. The president and his allies became keenly aware that with legal challenges exhausted and electoral votes certified, their only hope would be a last-ditch scheme to prevent Congress from certifying the win, thus throwing the entire system into constitutional chaos. President Trump ultimately wanted the Department of Justice to say the election was, quote, corrupt and, quote, leave the rest to me and the Republican congressman. We know many of President Trump's vocal supporters on January 6th also wanted the Justice Department to do whatever he asked, as long as it meant he could stay in power. President Trump did not fail to act during the 187 minutes between leaving the ellipse and telling the mob to go home. He chose not to act. His work on the January 6th Select Committee earned Adam Kinzinger Donald Trump's wrath. It came with death threats. The arc of Kinzinger's time in public life after January 6th stands in stark contrast to so many of his fellow Republicans who choose instead to overlook Trump's role in plotting the insurrection or make excuses or go straight down the rabbit hole of Trump's conspiracies around the 2020 election. Now, Adam Kinzinger is speaking to many of his fellow Republicans out there who may be looking for that permission structure to pull the lever and cross over and vote just this one time, maybe, for President Joe Biden, saying, quote, there's too much at stake to sit on the sidelines. It's where we start the hour with some of our favorite experts and friends, former Republican Congressman, MSNBC political analyst, David Jolly's here. Also joining us, MSNBC columnist and contributor, Charlie Sykes is here. And Democratic strategist and president of Brilliant Corners Research, MSNBC political analyst, Cornell Belcher is here. Um, I wanna start with you, David Jolly. And I want to dispel the notion that people like Adam Kinzinger or Judge Ludig or Liz Cheney 
were squishy and could go either way on policy. The three of them in particular, hardcore right-wing conservatives who see a constitutional and a democracy argument in not just abandoning Joe Biden, um, abandoning Donald Trump, but embracing and endorsing, I, I guess Liz Cheney hasn't taken that step yet, but she certainly seems to be inching in that direction, as is Judge Ludig. But just talk about, talk about the impact of, of not just sort of wearing the never Trump um, jersey, but of becoming a Biden supporter for Adam Kinzinger. Yeah, I, I love your framing, Nicole, because not all never Trumpers or disaffected Republicans are hard right conservatives, right? I, I was traditionally a squishy moderate. I, I'm still a squishy moderate, happy to <laughs> ally with with Democrats uh, and Joe Biden. But the likes of uh, Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney and Ludig and others, they have real ideological reservations. They oppose a lot of what the Biden administration does. These are not squishy moderates. And so the, the import of that is they're acting on conviction to put democracy in the country first in their view of the world. And it's, you know, what you often talk about, the permission structure for hard right conservatives who may oppose Don, uh, Joe Biden on policy, recognizing that in their view of the world, there's something greater. I think the other important thing that we're seeing here, and it's been well reported that Adam's former chief has gone over to the Biden camp to help organize and coalesce disaffected Republicans. We see the endorsement now of the former congressman. Absolutely living in that former Republican member world, I can tell you the uptick in activity among the Biden campaign to reach out to disaffected Republicans, even currently registered Republicans, that uptick hmm. is real. And if we're seeing it at the grass tops, if you will, the former electeds, you know they also have a plan for digital targeting to reach that Nikki Haley voter who, who said, I can't vote for Donald Trump. If the Biden camp is reaching Adam Kinzinger, they're reaching... Adam Kinzinger's cousins down there, the, the other disaffected voters mm -hmm. that you may have never heard of. And that's an important moment for the Biden campaign to make that move. Yeah, I mean, Charlie, the right can't figure out what to do with the, the sort of never Trump coalition. I, I too, um, am a squish and um, was never super comfortable with the hard right positions of the Republican Party. Voting for Hillary Clinton was the easiest vote I'd ever cast. A lot of Republicans said oh, it was the hardest thing I'd ever done. It was the, one look at Donald Trump, it was the easiest vote I ever cast, followed very closely by, by uh, the, you know, a tie for the easiest vote I ever cast for Joe Biden. Donald Trump is such a glaring threat to any Republican who's been active in the last 20 years, who saw democracy as, as this cause worthy of trying to export. I mean, the hypocrisy, the rank hypocrisy, means that Republicans owe more to the country. They owe more to the democracy to try to undo Republican support for Trump. Well, and, and Adam is so clear. His message, you know, I was really struck by the clarity of, of his message about the danger that Donald Trump poses. You know, and to, uh, to, to David's point, though, this is not easy for people like Adam Kinzinger. It's not easy for people like Judge Ludic and, and Liz Cheney because they are conservatives. They do not embrace the entire Biden agenda. You know, they're, they're, not, they're not waving pom-poms here, but they have looked at exactly what Donald Trump has done, what he is saying he's going to do in the prospects of another the Trump presidency. And so I do think that it's significant. And I do think that you're going to see more, uh, more Republicans joining. And again, the fact that these are conservative Republicans is crucial for providing that permission that that, you know, to go to conservatives who will list all the things they don't like about the Biden administration and say, OK, you know, this is not about you know right and left right now this is about that vertical uh, you know that 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 the, the vertical um line of democracy and authoritarianism and i think it's very important and think about where um where you know adam kinzinger falls in all of this because we've had so many other republicans saying that they are not going to vote for donald trump again now mike pence hasn't gone as far as adam kinzinger but it is extraordinary that you have Donald Trump's former vice president saying he will not vote for him. It is extraordinary when you have, you know, uh, members of the, the Trump cabinet saying we do not want him back in power again. And there will be more. I mean, I would expect that you're going to hear from Liz Cheney. And so going into November, you're going to have a compelling case of people who are, are crossing the lines and saying, look, we are 
putting our ideological differences aside for this moment because of what Donald Trump represents and the Dane and the threat to our Republican system of government that he represents. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.